Good morning guys. So if you have a child with sensory issues like I do, you will laugh when you see this picture. I woke up this morning, Sasha came in with nothing but her monkey George next to her. It was the cutest thing, but sensory issues can do weird things to you. be all about Sasha and her medical diagnosis and what exactly does she have. Um, often from new viewers who haven't followed us since the beginning or are really new to our channel, we often get asked questions about Sasha medically and what does she have and you know I see her walking but then I see her using her canes and then I see her in a wheelchair and sometimes she uses her stroller and I see her having a panic attack and I see her having this. So I just wanted to answer all your guys' questions today about what exactly Sasha does have. So Sasha was actually bo born full term, two days late, weighed a great weight at six pounds, 12 ounces. Um, she had no complications at all when she was born. For the first 24 hours, the only thing that actually gave me a little bit of a scare or were her um, APGAR scores were a little bit low, but you know, it's nothing abnormal. So we were just kind of seeing what was going on. And 24 hours later, she was gasping for air. She was in respiratory distress. She was turning blue. She wasn't eating anymore. So this mystery started to unravel about what did Sasha really have? Um, before I had Sasha, I had basically no complications. The only indication that Sasha might have something was they saw on one of the ultrasounds in a large ventricle on the right side of her brain. And I said to my OBGYN, my mid midwife, I said, is this anything to be alarmed at? And she said, you'd be shocked at how many babies actually have it. And it actually slowly goes away or means nothing at all. She goes, at birth, we can see a better, maybe a CAT scan and see better what's going on. She may need a shunt, but she said, most likely 90% chance she won't even need a shunt. So after that, Sasha was transported to another hospital about oh, over an hour away or so. And she was in the NICU there for almost the next six, almost six months of her life. Um, battling basically life. I'll insert pictures at the ends. I walked into the NICU and I was like, where is my child? I didn't rec recognize her at all. She was on a feeding tube up her up her nose, she was on oxygen, she was on a pulse ox machine to measure her oxygen level. She had so many tubes and wires hooked up to her, she was unrecognizable. So from the great NICU nurses and the doctors and everybody else at this hospital that was a little bit bigger and a little bit more equipped to deal with NICU babies and Sasha's medical condition. So I'm actually glad she was transferred there, they said to me, have you ever heard of this virus called CMV? And I said, no. And they said, we tested her for it and Sasha actually has the virus. From there, I learned what this crazy virus could actually give Sasha for the rest of her life. I got it while being pregnant. It's basically just like if you have an older child, especially in the home, going to daycare, going to school and bringing you home germs of, you know, the wonderful kids that do this and you know sneeze and cough all over everything and don't properly wash their hands so why is pregnant i got some very unwanted germs from my son 
and I will leave a link below down about the CMV virus and more of a medical background for you guys because I explain it in our terms and how Sasha got it, but there are many different ways to not acquire, but there are many different things that go with it. So Sasha has the CMV virus and for the next six months she's fighting for her life in the NICU. Um, because of the CMV virus, Sasha still does have an enlarged ventricle on her right side. She never had to have a shunt. She does have brain damage due to it. She does have an eye condition called strombontesis that don't relax her eye muscles. She actually has great vision, but it pulls the eye muscles together because they basically said that we could do surgery, but there's no guarantees due to her cerebral palsy and her muscles. So we stuck with bifocals since she's been about three years old. Sasha also has cerebral palsy. She has seizures. She has hearing loss completely 90% on her right side, mildly going on her left side. We go once a year to go get tested for her hearing due to the CMV virus. The number one indicator that an infant has the CMV virus is actually hearing loss. So Sasha has panic attacks, she's had anxiety, she wears AFO leg braces due to her mobility. Sometimes Sasha is great on her feet, sometimes she gets very tired, sometimes she gets stressed out. She can't walk long distances, she has asthma, she's been on oxygen, she has respiratory issues from in the past still lingering. We have a nebulizer machine. So we have a little bit of everything going on. So especially when I know she's gonna be exhausted, I stick her in something to transport. So after that six months, we got, sorry, let me back it up. Almost four months she was in the first hospital. I'm losing my mind. And for the next two months, Sasha was in a different hospital, a hospital that we still go to for regular follow-up appointments for basically everything going on with Sasha. And from there, we came home and for the, when she came home from six months to about a year, that was all filled with specialists, medical appointments, and people basically telling me what the future would hold for Sasha. We had a great team of specialists in the home program come into our home when Sasha was six months discharged finally from the hospital to about almost three years old. They helped us with OT and physical therapy and speech and order medical equipment. From there, you know, Sasha, didn't say her first word to almost, I think, three years old, we signed words and that's how we communicate with one another. She didn't start crawling till almost a year and a half. She didn't start walking unassisted until she was over four years old. She walked into pre-K, she was still crawling on the floor, she was still non-communicative. I don't think they had ever, ha ever had a case like Sasha before. So Sasha's had a long battle to get to where she is. And I'm always open for questions below or, hey, I've never heard of this. What exactly does she have going on? Because I want our channel to be a place where people of all sorts of special needs can connect and ask questions. So if you're ever wondering about what Sasha has, please ask us below. But that's basically the outline because I could sit here for the next four days and tell you everything that Sasha has been through, but it would be way too long for this video.